Good morning, it's Tuesday, December 10th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. All right, the precious metals are digesting yesterday's gains after we saw an explosive move higher following Chinese stimulus news and renewed gold purchases. Some headlines that I'm watching, U.S. equities are recovering after stocks pulled back from all-time highs. We've got geopolitical uncertainty and then also inflation data due out. Now, Chips, Banks, and Oracle, they all slid yesterday with China launch an antitrust suit against NVIDIA, which was also down 2%, and AMD down 5%. Partially to blame for the weaker overnight price action in anything China was that overnight Chinese economic data showed, despite a rebound, year-to-date imports were 1.9% lower, potentially pointing to a decline for all of 2024. A decline from 2023 would mark the third annual fall in the the past five years, led by the pandemic in 2021 and 2022. So monitoring this type of data is really critical for those that trade silver, copper, crude oil, soybeans, anything that's kind of China related, you want to monitor their import data. Now the key becomes what is China's response? And Chinese economists are ramping up their expectations for interest rate cuts and more spending. So what does this mean? In my opinion, it's buy the dip in anything that's China related. Now looking at the overnight price action focusing on the precious metal sector we see gold sitting at 2694 near the highs of the overnight session the low was 268070 the high was 269950 just underneath yesterday's high of 2700 so that's your critical psychological level you look at silver Big explosive move yesterday. 3247 is where we're trading last. The range 3230 on the downside, 3266 on the upside. So kind of in the middle of the range here, just under that 3250 line, which we monitored that level for several months before. Copper's down two at 425. Platinum's down six at 948. Now shifting to the outside markets, crude oil was down 40 cents at $68. Again, throw up the 100-day moving average. Just keep that on your daily chart there the resistance point is going to be 70 bucks and then you look at the mid 60s as your critical level of support looking at the dollar index this is very important you want to monitor this chart as well because it's bouncing back up it's been up for three straight days we're sitting at 106.32 that's up 20 ticks here and if it trades above 106.71 that could lead to a retest of 108 which was the contract highs we don't want to see that type of trading action here especially from the risk assets that many of you specifically trade. Now, Bitcoin did correct after breaking through that 100,000, went to 104, broke below it. Yesterday, we saw a mini flash crash down to about $94,640. A lot of people had 96,000 buys, 95,000 buys, and we saw those quickly filled and the market shoot back above it here, trading just right around the 98,500 level. The S&P 500 is up four at 60.69. And if you've been trading with me for a while, chances are you do have long equity exposure. If you wanted to incorporate that in your futures portfolio, we'll be looking looking at exiting that position and then also putting in some new orders on the March contract ahead of the expira expiration. Get into the economic data coming out here and some things to watch. Of course, the CME Fed watch tool sitting at about an 86% chance that the Fed cuts 25 basis points at the December 18th meeting. One week ago, it was 72%. Wednesday, so tomorrow, we'll have the CPI data as well as the core. That's where all the fireworks are going to happen. That's going to be a make or break moment on a lot of different markets out here as the prices will adjust to potential impacts on policy shifts. Thursday, we'll see PPI and also the initial claims. So the technical levels that I'm watching in the gold market here today. So gold, the chart pattern is still consolidating, but it's trending higher here, slow and steady. The resistance points, the 50-day moving average at 2701, that was yesterday's high. That was also basically the overnight high. The trend reversal point, if we break below above that, 2740. A move over 2740, in my opinion, party back on. We're going to try and get to those all-time highs and those contract highs. What the number Number that you want to watch is 2748 because that would equal we have retraced that big sell-off on November 25th. Remember that was the day that gold fell about $100 um, so we would have retraced all of that move. So today's probable trading range, 
2665 on the downside, 2706 on the upside. The edges on a break above or below are about 2728 on the upside and 2648 on the downside. However, I think we are lacking the catalyst for that type of explosive move, in my opinion, today. Silver, we did get the first close above the 50 day moving average from November 7th at 3229. Today's probable trading range on the downside, 3211. 32.96 on the upside. A break below that 32.11 could move back down to 31.76 and a break above the 32.96 would see a move up to 33.46. But we need a volatility surge in order for that to happen. And again, I'm just not seeing the catalyst at the moment. You guys got any questions about futures options trading? You want to get involved? They are launching a one ounce contract on the, on the gold market. It's a bit more cost effective, capital efficient here as far as buying one ounce of gold on the futures contract rather than one ounce of gold physically. Although I'm not knocking holding physical, I'm just saying that this is a bridge for someone to become involved in the futures markets for the first time ever on kind of a limited way in my opinion. So reach out, send out an email to info at Blue Line Futures if you'd like to get some information on opening up a futures trading account. Again, you got any questions, my number is 312-858-7303. Remember, futures and option trading does involve risk loss. May not be suitable to all investors. Good luck, good trading.